Welcome back to Gary Keep It Simple. I've got the one I've been waiting to do. I had to get some equipment and now I've got it. So I'm going to do the gold standard. I've started off with the TIAC, but I'm going to do it on other machines as well. But I've got to set this standard somewhere. So I am doing in the first couple the TIAC. And then I will be doing the Sony and some various other things. But it will be showing you how good the tape is at doing what it's doing. A couple of other side effects on it and we'll have some proper listening tests. I'm going to do bits of comments, bits of everything. And if you feel it's done you any good, you can always click on subscribe, you know, get some use out of the channel. This is what we're going to do, this is where we're going to do it, and let's get started. First thing to say is that I'm doing this for the W1200 TIAC, but I will be doing it for the other machines. But I wanted to get some standard figures, and so I'm using a TDKD, which is a tape that they would have used, probably, to calibrate the thing. First of all, to set the parameters, this is an Audacity display of what I've been using to test it. Here we go, this is what's on the test tones. White noise and pink noise, drum and a pluck, all at 0 dB. White noise, pink noise, drum pluck, all at minus 20 dB. And a tune. The same tune on both, followed by a 1 kHz and a 3 kHz, both at 0 and at minus 20 dB. The results should be interesting. What I'm going to do now is play the track, but I'm going to cut the tune down so that you just get a taster of it. Initially, these signals are at 0 dB, so be careful. Don't blow your speakers and mind your ears. Here we go. White noise, 0 dB. Pink noise, 0 dB. Drum. Pluck. Very low bass drop. Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos, dynamic and clean. Then again the same at minus 20. Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos, dynamic and clean. charts you've seen above are what we're going to be looking at in detail later. We've got 1k and 3k at 0 dB, followed by 1k and 3k at minus 20 dB, and then we've got frequency sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, first of all at minus 20, and then at 0.
Having heard that, some of you will say, well, that was a waste of time. And some of us say, well, that's wonderful. What you'll have heard there is various sounds. And at the end of the sweep, you may well have heard some tweets and some bleeps and some rather cute sounds. They were not on the original file, but they are on this video. I would guess that everybody has their own version of what sounds they hear. Interestingly, though, on the lower level signals, there were less of them. This is what it's all about. This is a TDK. It's a TDK D90. It's one of those. You can see nicely. It's got a clear shell. It's got a very rugged shell. There is no flex in there at all. And it's well, there's not a lot you can say. It's like a Volkswagen Beetle, it's like a Mini. It is a functional, good piece of equipment. It does what it's designed to do. I'll just show you the tape colour there. We can get to it. I'll do a close up later on. If I, see if I can do one now. Here we go. It's nice. So I'd describe that as a nice, sort of chocolatey brown, Cadbury's milk chocolate type colour. I think you can see it's also got a nice smooth surface. It's been well made, the cassette is in good condition. And it looks like the sort of piece of equipment that you'd want to do a job with. Now onto the nitty gritty, what we've come here for, to see how it performs. Okie dokie, first of all here we have the sound of the digital The analogue, straight off the tape. Next we have the digital bass drop. Followed by the analogue version. Next we have five seconds of the digital tune. Followed by the analogue version. And now we'll go back to looking at the actual charts and see what the results are, because the rest of it isn't actually something that you can listen to. Well, you can, but it's a bit boring. When you've heard one 3K tone, you've heard them all. In case you haven't noticed, green's digital and blue is analogue. So this is the 1K tone at 0 dB, and you can see the distortion here. This is known as harmonic distortion. So now we look at the minus 20 dB signal, digital, and then the analog. Now there's no distortion on there at those points that we saw it before. Next we're going to look at the digital sweep and then the analog sweep. That was a bit quick, but let's look at them overlapped. Audacity automatically scaled this and came up with two slightly different scales. I've had to correct that on this picture, but you can see the general shape and the way it actually ended up. Next we're going to do this with the minus 20 dB and I think you'll find it slightly more interesting. On that quick glance you didn't see very much difference, did you? On this overlap you can see that actually there's only three peaks at the end longer on the green. Which is relevant because the green's the digital and the blue is what's coming out of the tape machine. So how did that happen? Well look at that. What we're looking at here is the white noise response digital, white noise response analog. Now we're looking at pink noise response digital. And then we're going to look pink noise response analog. Now we're looking at zero dB on the tune digital. And then on the analog, not a lot of difference. That's the important bit. And then on the minus 20 on the tune. On this trace, you can see that it's going up to 15K. It's still responding. But then you get into the hiss, the background noise level of the hiss. Now, what we're going to look at now is here is on the zero dB, it steps down at 16 kilohertz. And if you were to look at the digital version of this, it, it's almost identical. I had to go back and check this a couple of times. They are identical. Let's look at them both together. They are identical. There is a very slight difference in the coloration, but other than that... Okay, so what we've got there is a set of parameters, a set of standard tests, and some results. The results are relative on only the 1200, of course, which means that I can then compare any other tapes I record in the 1200 to the TDKD. And the TDKD, everybody has it. So, you know, at the end of the day, everybody knows what the TDKD is like. So we can use that as a reference. What I will also be doing 
at some point is I will be doing these against another deck. The deck I'll use will have bias tweaking, so therefore we'll be able to see if we're getting the best out of the tape. What I'm doing with this one is I'm trying to see what tape works best in the deck, but the parameters and the test conditions will be the same for all of the tests that I do in future. If anybody's got any ideas as to why that's not a good idea, then please leave it in the comments. If they think that uh, it's a good idea, definitely leave that in the comments. And if you think you're getting anything out of the, the channel, then please subscribe or whatever, just to try and get the numbers up. The more people you subscribe, the more people I get, the, the better I can make the videos and the more worthwhile it is for everybody. So yeah, it's all, it's all in it for all of us. Anyway, hope that makes sense. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's make life simple because it doesn't need to be that complicated. And I'll catch you again. Bye-bye.